CertainTeed Stone Facade Architectural Stone Cladding System is the right choice for ease and speed of stone veneer cladding installation. Easy to handle panels are 8 inches high and either 10 inches, 14 inches, or 24 inches wide. Perimeter edges are beveled to hide the substrate for a more attractive appearance. While masonry products have the potential to create moisture buildup inside the wall cavity, which can lead to structural damage and mold growth, CertainTeed Stone Facade features the industry's only fully integrated rain screen, providing additional structural support and ample drainage from top to bottom for outstanding moisture management and protection of the home. These instructions describe and illustrate the steps involved in properly installing stone facade to ensure a lifetime of performance. The purpose is to provide detailed information and how-to tips that will simplify the installation process. Be sure to wear a long sleeve shirt, full length pants, no shorts, and safety gloves at all times when handling stone facade to avoid cuts from the metal rain screen insert. Prior to delivery to a job site, do not store product cartons outside and do not double stack pallets. At the job site, use a tarp to keep cartons dry for easier handling. Stone facade product is stored in waxed boxes with holes to allow air flow. Do not use shrink wraps that prevent air circulation. Do not store in unventilated spaces. Store away from areas where falling objects or other construction activity might cause damage. Do not carry cartons by the strapping. Hold the cartons from underneath. Do not drop cartons. When handling panels, protect the face of product from scratches. We highly recommend cutting stone facade with a wet saw. A tile or brick saw will limit dust production. The saw must have sufficient travel to rip a 24-inch stone panel. Use a continuous rim-wet diamond saw blade. Alternately, a dry saw with a continuous rim diamond blade or abrasive masonry blade can be used. Caution! When dry cutting, dust will become airborne. Only cut stone outdoors or in a well-ventilated place. A respirator or a, a NIOSH N95 dust mask is required. You will need an electric hand grinder with an OSHA-approved guard, with a diamond wheel or masonry abrasive wheel for grinding. A face shield should be worn whenever you are cutting or grinding stone facade. Finally, you will need a cordless impact screwdriver or hammer drill. Stone facade must be installed over flat, plumb walls sheathed with either 7 16 inch OSB or half inch plywood that is in good condition and properly fastened, wrapped in an approved weather resistant barrier, such as CERTORAP house wrap that meets local building code requirements. As such, stone facade cannot be fastened over foam sheathing. The structure must be able to handle stone panel weight of 15 pounds per square foot, exclusive of any other external loading, such as wind load or seismic load. The wall must be plumb and flat within one quarter inch over 10 feet in any direction. Using a string along the wall, measure the deflection of the wall from the lower point of the wall to the string. Use composite shims when necessary to correct wall imperfections. Note, if removing siding prior to installing stone facade, remove any old fasteners that may create uneven conditions on the wall. Like all masonry products, stone facade is designed for two-story applications with a maximum height of 30 feet. Expansion joints may be required to meet local code requirements. Consult with a registered design professional and or structural engineer to make these determinations. Warning! When stone panels are cut, drilled, or shaped, it will create dust. 
This dust may contain crystalline silica, which can pose a health risk. For cutting, drilling, or grinding stone, a NIOSH N95 dust mask, hearing, and eye protection such as a face shield are required to be worn. Here's how to cut with a wet saw. Place panels face up with insert side down on the saw table. Mark the stone panel where it will be cut. Do not cut more than one panel at a time. Use a continuous rim diamond saw blade rather than a segmented blade for cutting stone facade. Segmented blades can cause cracking and chipping of panels. The blade should pass through the panel slowly to avoid cracking. Try to avoid cutting through one of the bottom panel locking tabs because these tabs will vibrate during cutting and may crack the panel. Dust from cutting will leave a chalky appearance if not removed. Clean cut edges of panels by dipping or rinsing them in a five gallon bucket of clean water after cutting. Frequently changing the recirculating water in the wet saw also helps keep the panels clean. And here's a pro tip. Try and position the panel so when cutting, the blade's final path is through stone rather than the exposed parts of the steel insert. Having the last path through stone rather than steel helps keep the blade sharp. Trimming and staggered cuts are best made with a hand grinder with OSHA approved guard and a diamond wheel or masonry abrasive wheel for grinding. While not recommended, a saw with dry diamond blade or abrasive masonry blade can be used to cut stone facade panels and accessories. Use tin snips or a grinder to cut the metal insert. Holes can be made with a drill using a masonry bit or masonry hole saw or a grinder with a masonry blade. Fasten panels using an impact screwdriver or drill. Using an impact driver is recommended as it makes driving screws easier and lessens the chance of stripping screw heads. Fasten the panel to the wall using number eight by one and a half inch stainless steel wood screws, pan or truss head. When installing stone facade panels and accessories 14 inches or wider, use a minimum of three screws. Two of the screws are to be placed within three inches of either end of the panel, one on each end. The third screw shall be fastened within three inches of the center point between the other two fasteners. Additional screws can be placed wherever is needed to properly secure the panel to the wall. Do not use nails to apply stone facade, as nails do not have the holding strength to support stone facade panels. For panels less than 14 inches, you must have a minimum of two fasteners. Two of the fasteners are to be placed within three inches of either end of the panel, one on each end. Additional fasteners can be placed wherever is needed to properly secure the panel to the wall. If a panel has less than two holes in the fastening flange, arrangements with mating panels must be made to accommodate a longer panel length such that no individual panel on the wall has less than two holes in the fastening flange. When stone facade panels and or accessories are cut or modified in a way that removes the fastening flange, they must be face fastened. This can occur when installing under a windowsill, in a gable, or at the top of a wall. Free drill holes for the face fasteners. By drilling a pilot hole through the stone panel, using a 7 32nd inch masonry bit. Avoid running into interference from the metal insert by looking at the cut edge of the panel to see where the inserts are located prior to selecting a drilling point for the attachment hole. If the masonry drill bit runs into the stainless steel insert, which is integrated throughout the panel, you may not be able to drill through this seam of the panel. Patch the hole using color matched exterior grade sanded caulk and then try another location on the panel for drilling your hole. Drill a countersinking hole in the same location using a 3 8 inch masonry bit, making sure to leave a minimum of a half inch of stone behind the head of the screw. 
Use a two and a half inch stainless steel screw for attachment of the panel. If the screw has minimal or no engagement into the substrate, remove the screw and re-drill the countersinking hole deeper. Drive the screw into the panel. Do not overdrive the screw as you will crack the panel. Use color matched exterior grade sanded caulk to cover the screw head. Snap a chalk line a minimum of 8 inches above the finished grade or 6 inches above a paved surface. Check local building codes to verify proper clearances for your area. We recommend using a dark color trim coil to fill the space. Position the top of starter strip on the chalk line, leaving 4 inches of clearance above finished grade or 2 inches of clearance above a paved surface. Fasten the stone facade starter strip every 8 inches to 10 inches using number 8 one and a half inch stainless steel wood screws with pan or truss heads. Screw fasteners tightly to the wall. Leave a half inch gap between starter strips. For outside corners where two starter strips meet, hold starter strips back one half inch from the corner on each side to allow for appropriate alignment of the corner pieces. Starting at the bottom of the wall, install corners and any other accessories on the course you are working on before installing panels. Do not assume the wall corners are square. Use composite shims if needed to compensate for uneven walls. If applying stone to one wall surface only, utilize only one type of corner, left or right, but never both. Start by cutting off the rain screen tabs along the bottom of the back side of each corner that will be mating with the starter strip. Select a corner and position it on the wall. In single wall applications, the long return will always be applied to the surface where the stone is to be applied. Lock the first corner into the starter strip and then check to be sure the corner is level in both directions. If it is not possible to level in both directions, always make sure that the long return is level. Once level, fasten with two screws on the long return of the corner. Alternate the corner widths, weaving them up the wall to avoid the alignment of vertical seams. When one corner is vinyl siding, Leave an eighth inch gap between the stone and vinyl accessory to allow for expansion. When stone will be applied to adjacent wall surfaces, utilize both left and right corners. In adjacent wall applications, alternate the wall that the long return is applied to using both left and right hand corners as you work up the wall. Start by cutting off the rain screen tabs along the bottom of the back side of each corner that will be mating with the starter strip. Select a corner and position it on the wall. Lock the first corner into the starter strip and then check to be sure the corner is level in both directions. If it is not possible to level in both directions, always make sure that the long return is level. Once level, fasten with two screws on the long return of the corner. Alternate both the corner widths and the walls to which the long return is applied, weaving them up the wall to avoid the alignment of vertical seams. Inside corners are created using regular panels. There is more than one method for finishing an inside corner. For all methods, make sure that the inside corner is properly flashed first. Method 1. Create a federal corner by butting the stone panel to the stone panel of the adjacent wall to avoid any chance of having the house wrap showing through. Method 2. Fashion an inside corner with a minimum two and a quarter return using color matching trim coil and a metal bending brake. Method three, use a cellular PVC trim board in the corner and have stone panels butt to within an eighth inch of the trim board. Method four, miter each mating panel. Method five, notch out alternating panels to create a staggered appearance.
At Sills, try to minimize field cuts in high traffic areas to provide good aesthetics. Use the side tab screw flanges whenever possible to eliminate sill rocking. For shorter windows, only two sills may be required. Center the field cut under the window. Use color matched sanded caulk to finish the joints where the sills butt together. Longer windows may require three or more sill pieces. Make all field cuts where sill pieces join together so that cut ends are not visible. Do not make cuts at the exposed end of a sill. When sills will mate at corners, miter the sills, making sure that the sill is laying flat on the saw table before cutting. Warning: When working with electrical lines, verify that power has been disconnected. Have a qualified electrician install a properly flashed exterior electrical box that is waterproof. Light boxes and electrical boxes will fit over standard light and electrical boxes as an ornamental covering. Single course design. The single course can be added before or during panel installation. Surrounding panels will need to be notched around the box. You may need to grind off the bottom bevel from the panel that installs directly above the box to ensure a proper fit. Multi-course design. The multi-course box is designed to be installed when you have reached the row of stone panels where an outlet is installed. When installed, multi-course light and electrical boxes are designed to span two vertical courses. Begin by measuring from the bottom of the box to the top of the course below. Mark this measurement onto the multi-course box and make the cut. After cutting, place the box back over the outlet and measure 16 inches up from the edge of the cut you just made and make a mark. That's the height of two courses. Cut off this top section. Then fasten using two number eight one and a half inch stainless steel wood screws with pan or truss heads on each side of the box. When installing the next course of stone over a light or electrical box, it is necessary to either remove the bevel from the area on the next course panel where it will mate with the top of the mounting box or grind away the top of the mounting box to allow the next course to mate properly. To install the first course, start by cutting off the rain screen tabs along the bottom of the back side of each panel that will be mating with the starter strip using snips or a hand grinder. Make sure you actually cut off the tabs rather than trying to bend them out of the way which could damage the panel and cause the panel to not sit in the starter properly. Position the first panel without tabs into the starter strip and butt against the corner or trim. Using a short level, check to ensure that the panel is level and aligned with the corner or trim. Use a level on every panel or accessory to ensure that the panels stay level from panel to panel and course to course. This is important because the panels cannot be cheated up or down to make up for being out of level. Fasten the panel to the wall using the required number of number eight by one and a half inch stainless steel wood screws with pan or truss heads. Position screws evenly across the fastening flange of the panel. When working on adjoining stone walls, you may find it best to work on both walls simultaneously in a stair-step pattern, as it helps in making fine adjustments to the panels as you work up the wall. Starting from a corner, Place the second course panel onto the mating groove on the top of the first course panel and slide into position. Stagger the second and subsequent courses so there is at least three to five inch offset.
Next, select a second panel, remembering to alternate panel widths randomly. Check the panel style to ensure that it varies from the design of other panels near it. Position it into the starter strip and slide to mate into the first panel. Panels should fit snugly together without leaving an unsightly gap. Check to ensure that the panel is level and aligned with the previous panel. End the course by cutting the panel to size if needed. The cut end of the panel should face away from high traffic areas. If the stone ends at PVC millwork, make sure to leave an eighth inch clearance to allow for expansion. Use a long level to verify that the entire course is level. Since each subsequent course will only be as level as the previous courses, Unlevel panels can lead to unsightly horizontal gaps between courses. Step back from the wall frequently and check the look of your installation. Avoid repeating patterns. Continue installing panels as previously shown. To assure a snug fit, if necessary, tap panels into place with a rubber mallet and a piece of wood. Small adjustments to get level can be made by raising the panel with a crowbar or substituting another panel to optimize mating. Composite trims may be necessary for adjusting the panel. We recommend the trim installed around openings should project out from the wall a minimum of two inches to cover the cut panel edges. This can be accomplished by using two layers of five quarters nominal thickness restoration millwork PVC trim at windows and doors. In our case, we'll be installing the second layer of PVC trim after the stone panels are installed. If necessary, use a wet saw to notch panels around a window or door. In our case, we planned for the area under the window to end in a full course, so notching is not necessary. Under windows, you may install a sill or PVC trim. We'll be installing a sill. Install the sill as previously shown, then measure and install the panel that butts to the sill. Leave an eighth inch gap where stone meets millwork to allow for expansion. When you reach the top of the door or window, notch out the panels to fit around the window or door. But if the bottom of the stone panel aligns with the frame or brick mold, you may use a piece of starter strip to lock in the bottom of the panel. Remember to cut off the bottom rain screen tabs prior to placing panels on the starter strip. There are several ways to finish the top course. If the fastening flange has not been removed, a PVC trim board can be used to hide the fastening flange at the top of the course. Another way to fasten the top course is to rip cut the stone to fit up to the soffit, in which case you'll have to face fasten the panel. Measure, then rip cut the stone panels to height. Then drill a pilot hole through the stone panel using a 732nd inch masonry bit. Try to locate the holes so that it does not go through the stainless steel insert. You may not be able to drill through this part of the panel. Drill a countersinking hole in the same location using a 3 8 inch masonry bit. Making sure to leave a minimum of a half inch of stone behind the head of the screw. If the screw has minimal or no engagement into the substrate, remove the screw and re-drill the countersinking hole deeper. Drive screws into the panel. Do not overdrive the screws as you will crack the panel. Use color matched exterior grade sanded caulk to cover the screw head. For new two-story home construction, it is recommended to leave a 3 8 inch gap between the top of the stone course and soffit during installation to allow room for the house to settle and to keep the top course of the stone panels from crushing the soffit. To finish off the installation, 
We'll now install our second layer of 5 quarters nominal thickness restoration millwork PVC trim. At the bottom, we'll caulk in a trim piece to fill the gap between the window bottom and sill. To install around penetrations, take measurements for the location of the penetration. For odd shapes, it may help to create a template by tracing the shape of the penetration to be cut around onto a piece of cardboard or scrap wood. Transfer the measurements or shape onto the stone panel. Then use a hole cutter or an angle grinder with a diamond or masonry wheel to cut out the shape. Test the panel for fit and modify as required, then install. For vertically transitioning from stone to another cladding material, PVC trim or vinyl accessories such as butted J-channels can be used to transition between claddings. When horizontally transitioning from stone to other cladding materials, Make sure to properly flash the joint according to applicable building codes in your area. Use the guiding principle of diverting the water down, out, and away from the structure. First, install the stone sill. Keep factory edges on the outside ends and cut edges of the sill. Flash above the sill to divert water over the sill. Then install cladding above stone facade as per the manufacturer's installation instructions. Shutters, mailboxes and other finishing touches can be attached to stone panels provided that the proper hardware for mounting into masonry is used. Use a masonry bit to drill holes and avoid drilling in between seams in the stones when possible. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for mounting to stone or masonry products. To install stone facade to poured concrete, fasteners must be stainless steel and at least one inch long. Fasteners must not have a conical head and must fit flush on the fastening hem. Examples of appropriate fasteners include Simpson Strong Tie Titan 1 half inch by 1 and 3 quarter inch 410 stainless fasteners. Simpson Strong Tie Titan 1 quarter by 1 and 1 quarter 410 stainless fasteners and Tapcon 410 stainless quarter inch by 1 and a quarter inch hex head fasteners. Fastening to cement masonry units will require larger screws like those mentioned. These screws, however, are too large in diameter to pass through the holes in the fastening flange, so the holes will need to be enlarged to accommodate the larger screws. Begin by installing the starter strip. Drill 17 64 inch holes in the starter strip every 8 to 12 inches. Locate and level the starter strip on the wall at least four inches above grade or two inches above a hard surface. Refer to local building codes. Transfer hole centers to the concrete wall. Drill holes with a hammer drill. Install starter strips by using stainless masonry fasteners and screw to the wall using the impact screwdriver. To install the first course, cut off the rain screen tabs along the bottom of the back side of each panel that will be mating directly with the starter strip using snips or a hand grinder. Drill out the holes in the fastening flange on the panels to 17 64 inch diameter to accept the 1 quarter inch screws. Two screws are required for panels under 14 inches or three screws for panels 14 inches or wider. Locate and level the panel on the wall. Then transfer hole centers to the concrete wall with a punch or pencil. 
Remove the panel from the wall to avoid damage to the panel while drilling. Then drill holes with a hammer drill. Fasten using stainless masonry screws and an impact screwdriver. To replace a damaged stone panel, carefully chip away with a hammer at the damaged panel area to expose the metal rain screen. Be sure to use a full face shield and gloves. Using tin snips, snip away the rain screen. Repeat chipping the stone and snipping the rain screen until you have completely removed the damaged panel. The fastening flange does not need to be removed as it is holding the panels above in place. Clean up debris. Flatten out any remaining parts of the existing insert left on the wall using a hammer. Important! Make sure you repair any damage to the house wrap before installing the replacement panel. Remove the fastening flange of the replacement panel. Drill a pilot hole through the stone panel using a 7 32nd inch masonry bit. If the masonry bit runs into the stainless steel insert, which is integrated throughout the panel, you may not be able to drill through the seam of the panel. In that case, patch the hole using color matched exterior grade sanded caulk and then try another location on the panel for drilling your hole. Drill a countersinking hole in the same location using a 3 8 inch masonry bit making sure to have a minimum of one half inch of stone behind the head of the screw. Note, you may have to use an angle grinder to remove the bevels on the side of the replacement panel to get a good fit. Use two and a half inch stainless steel screws to attach the panel. If the screw has minimal or no engagement into the substrate, remove the screw and re-drill the countersinking hole deeper. Drive the screw into the panel. Do not overdrive the screw as you will crack the panel. Use two screws for panels less than 14 inches and three screws for panels 14 inches or wider. Use color matched exterior grade sanded caulk to cover the screw heads. To clean stone facade, lightly scrub using soap and water. Do not power wash or use harsh chemicals or acids as this can affect or remove the product color.